Have you ever been curious about how to efficiently route fiber into Mark Forge 3D printed composite parts? Hi everyone, this is Jesse Hallworth, 3D Printing Application Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and today we'll be going over a few techniques for placing continuous fiber strands by using the Mark Forged Iger software. To get started with routing some custom fiber layers, we'll first want to ensure that fiber is enabled in the part view of our file. We'll turn on carbon fiber for now, but the methods we'll go over can work for all of the fiber types. If you're curious about the fiber types and some example applications for them, feel free to read through our blog post linked in the description below. Once fiber is enabled and the part is sliced, we're able to go into the internal view of our part, which lets us look at each individual layer of the print file. With the 3D view mode enabled, we can select multiple layers of our part with the layer navigation bar. Once we do this and toggle on fiber, we're able to access fiber controls for the group of layers we have selected. Just like in the part view of our file, we're able to access the two different fiber fill types, with the first type being concentric. Like the name implies, this will place fiber strands that are concentric to the walls of your part. With this fill type, we can reinforce all of the walls of our part, or more finely tune it to reinforce just the outer shell, or the interior walls. This fiber fill type is great for providing strength against compression or bending forces that are parallel to the XY plane of our print layers. You can also increase or decrease the number of concentric fiber rings in a group of fiber layers, and the software will automatically attempt to fit these rings based on your wall reinforcement settings. This can have a direct impact on how strong your part will be. The other choice we have here is the isotropic pattern. This option will create a fiber weave wherever fiber can fit in the layer being printed. By default, the software will rotate this pattern by 45 degrees every layer until it is back to the original position. Although we do have the option of manually adjusting these rotation values to account for things like geometry or part application. Because this pattern also allows us to set concentric walls, it is great for providing strength against torsional forces, or against compression in the z-direction. When settings are finalized, the Create Group option can be selected, and the software will inlay fiber strands in real time. When this is finished, you can save your changes for printing, or revert the file back to its last save configuration. As you can see, the process for placing custom fiber layers is pretty simple. But how can we use this to enhance the strength of our parts? To answer that, we'll go into the first fiber routing technique, which is known as the sandwich panel. This is actually the default configuration for how Iger places fiber layers into a part, and it works by taking the number of fiber layers specified in the part view and splitting that number in half. Half of the fiber layers will go on the top layers of your part, with half going on the bottom. This behavior follows beam bending theory, and the idea is that if one group of fiber layers is placed in tension by bending forces, the other group will be placed in compression. Like an I-beam, if one of these groups was not present, the strength of our part would be severely reduced. Now, for this brake lever part, we've enabled eight total fiber layers. The problem here is that if we look at the fiber layers that are placed near the top layers of our part, we can see that this group is actually not in the main body of the file. So while the fiber groups were created and placed in the layers that we defined, we aren't going to get any of the balanced strength that would come from a panel. To fix this, we'll continue using the 2D layer view mode and navigate into the main body of our part. To place an equal number of fiber layers as the bottom of the file, we'll first navigate under the solid plastic roof layers of our part. Once we find our desired layer, we'll press the F key on the keyboard to enable fiber for that specific layer. This lets us set up a sort of marker for where we want a group to begin. We can then switch back to the 3D view and create the group of layers. Our lower group contains concentric fiber with two fiber rings, so we'll match that for our top fiber layers and create our group. The great thing about the internal view is that we can individually adjust the layers for each fiber group, 
So if we wanted to adjust the size or settings of either panel here, we could do so easily. The next technique we'll show is referred to as shelling. This method is usually good for providing universal strength to the entire part. To go over setting up this method, we'll use one half of a thermoset plastic mold. Now this part would have to survive quite a bit of compression and clamping while also holding up against high temperatures, so we're going to use high strength high temperature fiberglass as our fiber here. To start out, we'll use the layers of isotropic fiber that were placed by the default sandwich panel behavior. With this technique, it can also be beneficial to place layers of isotropic fiber before or after any major geometric changes. So we'll place fiber layers under the main cavity of this mold. Since the default isotropic weave rotates every fiber layer by 45 degrees, it's usually best practice to keep these groups in intervals of four to provide uniform strength. Now we'll take a look at the remaining layers of the part. In the top half of this part, we have the main cavity and some holes that would need to withstand quite a bit of force. To reinforce these features, we'll select this large group and set the concentric fiber pattern. These layers of fiber will help support the compressive load that is being placed on our isotropic panels. After a group of fiber layers is created, it can be a good workflow to use the 2D view mode to inspect the fiber placement. In this case, we can see that some of our holes were not reinforced due to the space required for our two fiber strands. We could use this information to adjust our fiber settings as needed, but since this is just an example, we'll proceed for now. To complete the shell, we'll perform a similar action for the large space without fiber in the bottom half of our part. Now, this part is much stronger against the compressive forces in the z-direction. For our third fiber technique, which is referred to as striping, we'll use this coupling jaw part. As you can see, we have some layers of fiber near the top and bottom of our part, but we would like to provide some additional strength against the forces that will be applied to multiple areas of this part, such as the bolt hole. To do this, we'll select the group that we already have set up here, and set our fiber pattern type to stripes. This lets us create evenly spaced fiber groups based on the possible combinations of stripe count and the number of fiber layers per stripe. Just like the other fiber options, the software will place the fiber in real time, so we can see if we're placing too many fiber stripes. Like we mentioned, this is another way to set up a part that has uniform strength, but it is also great for reinforcing a part or section with evenly spaced groups to reduce material usage while still maintaining high strength. This leads us into our final fiber technique we'll talk about today. This one is simply called optimizing, which is, you guessed it, all about using what we know to optimize fiber usage based on part function. So, as an example, here we have a soft jaw that has been completely loaded up with fiber. Now, there's no doubt that this part would be extremely strong, but there's a ton of fiber placed in areas of this part where we may not need it, which means a higher material cost that may not be justified by higher part performance. So, let's start over with this part and delete the main group of fiber. To provide strength against any torsional forces, we'll keep our top and bottom panels set as an isotropic fill type. We'll also place an isotropic panel near the bottom of the main interfacing geometry to provide similar benefits. With that done, we can see that there are two main areas that will need to be reinforced. The first will be our interfacing feature that will be placed on our conformal load when clamped against our part. And the next will be these bolt holes. We'll create a shell of concentric fiber between the top two isotropic panels to provide strength for when the jaw is in use.
Next, we'll reinforce the bolt holes by selecting their layers and creating a group of fiber stripes. If we wanted to provide extra strength to this area, we could make this a solid group of fiber layers, similar to what we did near the top of this jaw. Since these will likely be clamped fairly tight, we'll increase the number of concentric rings here as well. With these quick adjustments, we've created a part that gives us strength that is near the levels of our original setup, while heavily cutting back on cost. Thanks for taking the time to go through these techniques with us. As you can see, MarkForge makes it incredibly easy to set up fiber reinforcement for strong end use parts. This means that you can quickly print and test different configurations to find a fiber layout that works best for your application. If you'd like to keep up to date with videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel. Have a great day everyone, and stay safe.